All right, Esper Dance. Our namesake card here, Dance of the Mance. Return X target, artifact and or non-aura enchantment cards. Converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, they become four, four creatures in addition to the other types. So really kind of a pseudo combo kill here. This is a deck that floated around the edges of the previous format. That seems very reasonable here. We're gaining Omen of the Sea, which is a cantrip that represents a permanent to sacrifice to our Doom Foretold that makes players sacrifice something every turn. We're gaining Treacherous Blessing as a way to generate some additional card advantage with this deck. And actually looking over this now, I don't know that I want them in the main deck, but... Playing zero conquers death, and my 75 is almost certainly wrong. Let's throw two of those in the board before we dive in here. You'll also note that even though we're a black and white deck, I'm electing to play the white, white two sweeper as opposed to Kaya's Wrath. That's intentional because if you look, there are two islands and two blue castles in this deck. So I just want to be able to consistently cast my sweeper on time as early as possible. This deck is definitely a fun as zero sum type deck. It can be quite miserable to play against. <laughs> Sorry, full effect. Yeah, I usually I usually mute when I when it makes a beep, but I forgot to that time. Yeah, that beep that beep noise was on my end in case anybody else is wondering. That's not your home. That was me. It was me clicking it off. I had it on in between sets. All right, we're gonna put our, oh wait, Sultai? I was gonna say, put our no nose to the Simic Grindstone right away. Something Sultai comes this way. The Vanifier deck was awesome. I'm gonna tag it as a deck of the day for the second day in a row. It's. Getting a page on my website, and I'm actually going to take time to write a primer about it tomorrow. So, cool. Cool Step Inc. is who I generally write for. You'll be able to find a primer for me on the deck later this week. Uh, if I pick the egg back up, I actually have to discard the hand size. So I think I'm just going to plus this for now. You're not sure what this deck is doing. The deck is basically just a control deck with a lot of interaction that eventually can pick all of the enchantments and artifacts that it's killed over time back up to its hand with dance. All right, sweet. So Othakaya actually gives us a roundabout way to deal with Jace here. Get to hit him, bounce this. Casualties of War. Yeah, casual Casualties of War is what Simic decks reached for last season to break the mirror, right? So it would make sense that people want to go in that same direction again. No, I don't think you're crazy. Like, you just need you just need Vanifier and an untapped creature or Vanifier and a Shepherd. I think I, I'd be surprised if our current build of Vanifier is optimal, but I would not but I would not be surprised if something in that archetype is competitive in this format. Kaya's a little bit to worry about here. <clears throat> or Kaya Nissa was looking at this. This is a little bit troubling. I have Shatter to clean the board out next turn a little bit, but she's ticking up to seven. She's threatening to alt in a couple of turns. Oh. 
Ooh. Doom Foretold says non-token permanent. Non-token, non-land. So like, and again, Cavalier of Thorns is such an integral part to what their deck is doing. Cavalier lets them uh, ramp a little bit more. It fills the graveyard for Uro. It also recovers their best card. So like, if I answer this Cavalier, I then also have to answer this Hydrate Crisis later. Yep, we, we might have a few matches against Blue Green. We're pretty high in the ranks right now. So, like, the higher you get, the more tryhards you hit. Yeah, it's, it's a combo kill with Great Merchant Top 10 Hammer. If you haven't watched us play it, you should go watch watch some of the clips. On, on turn 4, you can deal 20 plus damage with Great Merchant. Assuming you play Vanifier on 3. We did not ever hit Simic with the Titan deck. Is rank 205 high enough with 10 days for top 1200? Maybe. It's different every season. I really hate the ladder system. Yeah, that's that's actually true. Um, the fact that we just had a set release makes it less likely that you're safe because people will be playing more magic around set release. As, as an experiment, I think it was in October. In October, I stopped playing ladder matches three weeks out when I was ranked like 50 and I finished in the top 1200. Such a bad system. Like you just not play magic for three weeks and still finish where you need to finish. In, in my opinion, well-designed system should encourage people to play lots of magic. Or at the very least, not actively discourage them. Well, so it's not just as simple as that death. Because if you, if you decay people's MMR, you are then saying matches that are played later in the season are worth more than matches that were played earlier in the season, which complicates things. What I, what I actually think would be an ideal system is a split type system. So what I think we're, we're super dead. We're just like, you can't, we're just not competitive against these decks. Nothing, nothing we have played has felt competitive against Civic, except for the Vanifier deck. Sorry, Asterisk, the Vanifier deck has felt competitive. All these other decks have just been steaming, smoldering dumpster fires. Um, sorry, uh, focus, sideboarding really quick. Um, discard spells, strokes, D-Spark seems fine. Tefri seems quite bad. What am I? What am I cutting? Oath is just okay. I'm going to trim the oaths. Stacks. I don't... Do you consider this a stacks deck, April? I like, you're like the queen of stacks, right? So, like, I feel like the people who call this a stacks deck are, like underselling what the card smokestacks did. I honestly don't even know, Pickle. I 
a lot of what the Simic decks are doing that are good don't even involve Nissa anymore. Like the before Uro banning Nissa would have been enough, I think, almost certainly. But in a world where they have Cavalier and Uro too, I'm not really sure. Their, their deck playing a bunch of discard spells seem good. Is that closest we've had? That's fair. That's fair. It's like Fisher Price decks, which for standard, most of your things are Fisher Price variations anyways, right? I think I'm doing this now at sorcery speed because if I draw a land like this, like let's say I wanted to keep the other card. Eh, might silly. I might be silly. I don't think it really matters actually thinking on it more. That's probably fine. Here are my thoughts on Idealized. I'm sorry. Yeah, so in my opinion, what they should do is... I I don't really know that you can fix the inherent issues that the ladder system has. What I think I would like to see, I would like to see the existing ladder system supplemented by something similar to how Magic Online Championship Series works, where you can play league or constructed event style events and just collect points I think would be ideal vomit I think I just want all the doom foretolds always Andy Land is great because it means next turn I can Doom Foretold plus hold up Stroke. Yeah, I agree, Cubapo. April, leagues don't feel like they punish me for... Leagues don't feel like they punish me for playing Brews or having a bad run. Like, if I, if I owe to a league, it's not a big deal. I, I wonder if there's a way you could structure a league style event to not encourage people to just, I mean, I mean, I, there's gotta be a way, right? Like, I feel like, what if, what if they just had free constructed events instead of a ladder that like you collected points or trophies or something for doing well in them? Like, why, why doesn't that just work? That could work, right? Like, just get rid of the ranks altogether? I guess, I guess that misses out on pairing people based on skill level is what you fall, fall short of in that type of system. Is the important distinction there? I think I just do this to start, start working through their hand. might reward grinding too much but i mean like if the goal is just like get to the same one event it's no different right like you just set you set a, a threshold where you think x amount of players will meet this threshold Sure, people would, would leave after their first loss. That makes sense. Well, if they start 0-1, maybe you could have some kind of cooldown or punishment for dropping leagues that you don't finish generically. Thanks for the 15 months, Garrick. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I don't know. I just, I feel like, I feel like with regards to that setup on Arena, Wizards has been lazy and they've just copy and pasted what everyone else does as opposed to trying to innovate. What is the opponent doing? I have no idea. I think they were trying to play the waiting game, but the waiting game doesn't work when I have four power in play.
No, I don't think you want to gate it. I don't think you want to gate it to once a day, McNux, because you want people to be able to play as much as they want to play. So you'd you'd need some kind of cooldown to stop people from rejoining. But again, like theoretically discussing something, I haven't gotten into discussions like this on stream before because it's not practical. Like what we talk about here isn't going to happen. Like we need people at Wizard to actually decide, hey, this needs to happen. Dear Sushi, thank you for the 12 months of support. Welcome back. <clears throat> Sure, you could do something like that, Cube April. Because, I mean, like, the 1,000 gold entry fee is, like, pretty minimal, right? Get to sacrifice my blessing so it stops dealing damage to me. Oh, I guess we could just dance them, huh? Yeah, I think dance was lethal. Does it give them haste? No, it doesn't give them haste. That's fine. EL, ELO systems are awful for games that have variants by design. I shouldn't have counterspelled that. It didn't matter. I showed them disdainful stroke. Oh, dance is lethal to pilot doom triggers. That makes sense. Yeah, good call. Bring the doom. Doom on you. Doom on you. <clears throat> Keep. <clears throat> Can someone break down the way MTGO leagues work? You basically just pay money. Well, the, to start with, the price on MTGO leagues is questionable. It costs you $10 to play a league, and then you play five matches, and you get prizes based on what your record is from those five matches. So the, the price on Moto Leagues is not something I would like them to copy. But one of the ways it works is the Magic Online Championship Series invites players based on points that they accumulate from those events. That's true. If you're really good at Magic, you can make a lot of money playing Magic Online leagues. When I, when I was an undergrad in grad school, I frequently cashed two to $300 a month out of Magic Online. But the flip side of that is other people were spewing in those events so I could be a whale like that. So I could be a shark. Shark's the correct term, not a whale. Man, they, they went really interactive post porn, huh? I'm going to fetch a swap and cast Omen now so that way if I find a discard spell, I can cast it on my turn. Either of those are very good. <clears throat> Why did I only partly pay and let it auto tap? Because when I hovered the card, it wanted to tap both my black sources. And my goal was to scry into a non-black source. 
Or it's just crying into a black spell I wanted to cast. Well, I can just like never win unless they play, unless I draw exactly an exile spell. Basically never beat this card. Noted bad too. Thanks for using the shillings. And like, if I, if I kill this, I, D-Spark please. If I kill this, they get to just get another thing back. I guess I guess I get Doom Foretold. No, I'm just dead, right? Because they just escape this and I'm I guess they escape this and then I sweep. Yeah, they've had a bunch of discard spells. They have they have, they've had Thought Erasure and Agonizing Remorse out of them. Cavalier is just so tough for these interactive decks to punch through. Cavalier, Cavalier plus Uro. <laughs> oh, feel standard, man. Feel standard, man. Nope. Is there a way to shut down the Cavalier trigger when it dies, aside from Hushbringer? I don't think so. Ooh. Wizards took it too personal because we used to mock islands as the best card in standard. Fair. That's that's really aggressive. Sorry, I'm late. Don't worry. I got you. That's not the sweeper I wanted for Christmas. Attacking for six here. Highland still the best card. Breeding pulls an island. I like that take. Simic, but I think we're still dead. This figure sounds like exactly what the doctor ordered. Treacherous and Time Raveler, probably both kind of medium. Huh. Wonder if Remorse is good. It can break up their curve and it also can exile their key cards from the bin. Let's leave one blessing in instead of one Tefri. Let's give this a try.
All right. Let's do it. Joke's on you. I didn't like my spells anyways. With this viewer count, would I consider doing the next deck in the queue too? Yeah, it depends on... Uh, depends on where... How long we play this one for? Let's see if we just get beat up another couple times. I don't know that I'm gonna play this one. If we just keep getting getting beat up by everything. But yeah, might might do one more after this. I have the black white life gain deck prepped. Yeah, with almost three thousand people, it'd be a shame to not uh, not run a little extra. Yeah, I'm in for both of those, right? Ah, yes, the cl the classic, the eternal thought sees your thought sees. Doom on you. Doom on you. So every turn, each player has to sacrifice a non-land, non-token permanent. So we'll lose our omen here. Let's take a peekaboo what's going on upstairs here. It's got a bunch of removal spells that don't really do anything. So then, Oath will make them discard a card, lose two life, will gain two life, draw a card, get a knight. I mean, it makes you sacrifice itself, right? Oh no! Whips and chains excite me, chat. Read. So we're going to lose Dance here almost assuredly. Mm, I guess I technically lost a life with my sequencing here. So they're hoping to draw an Ox here as their best draw. Rankle's pretty good, too. Making us draw bold. Exile that one, please. Thank you. We played a Mardu Doom Foretold build earlier today that felt very reasonable. This build felt a little, little medium so far. I really wasn't a fan of the Esper Foretold decks last season. They always felt kind of underwhelming to me. We actually played it with uh, Kroxa, which is what we played in the Mardu build, and it felt very, very good. Maybe I should have eaten an egg last turn. That's good. That's good. It's good-ish. I guess they get to reanimate this phoenix. Oh, jeez. 
Heads up, heads up play from the opponent here. I don't think I would have thought of that. That was good. Yeah, I mean, I boarded out three of these, right? So like, if I disfigure it, chat, that's still a one for one. So like, is the question is, is my disfigure better or worse than a random card out of their graveyard? A random card out of their deck? Well, it's a 3-3, three, three, so I don't get to disfigure it. Ooh. Ah. Uh, I guess disfiguring that's still not very useful. Maybe maybe it is, so otherwise it's going to fire breathe and kill me. We're just dead no matter how I slice this, right? Because, like, I could double disfigure this, but then I'm taking two and then two, and I can gain three, so I take one down to six, and then I doom foretold this dies. Yeah, maybe, maybe it works out. Maybe it works out. I don't know. Munching on the egg here because I want them to pump this Phoenix again. They didn't take the bait. Or they did. Deal. Alright, so I go to six. I go to five. I go to eight. They have 10 cards in their bin, so this cat's going to come back again next turn. But it only hits me for... It only hits me for 5 total, and I'm going up to 8. And then I'm going to get to sacrifice this, so I don't take damage from my spells anymore. And then this is going to die to Doom Foretold again next turn, but still have 7 cards in their bin. This thing, The fact that this thing escapes for only 3 is so good. I can only dance for five currently. Well, you know. Are we dead? We're dead. I guess I could have done this and scried two again. It also wouldn't have done anything. All right, let's try another one. Are any any key things we're missing in here? The big the big difference between this and the Mardu build we played earlier is the Mardu build had Croxa had both Croxa and calls the dead to generate a board to apply pressure. Eat. Yeah, maybe Eat should be in here over the Noxious Grasp. I've been kind of medium on Noxious Grasp just because, um... All of the green decks are like Cavalier decks now. So, like, you need... Outside of Grawl, you need Exile. I 
I don't know. I feel like if this deck needs birth to beat aggro, this deck's probably just a dumpster fire. Like, if we can't beat Simic and we don't beat aggro, like, what are we what are we doing with ourselves? Kraken Saga doesn't really seem like it does anything useful. Sure. We can win the mirror. It's good. I like it. Optimism. Oh, golly. Maybe we beat blue-white control? Is our blue-white control matchup good? Let's find out. If we beat blue-white control, I'll be happy. So let's little things, chat. Putting blue-white control in a box is definitely one of my fetishes. Put them in a box and stick them in the ground, chat. Not just jamming blessing because I don't, uh, don't want them to counter my draw three. I'd also have to discard the hand size right now, which makes that not great. Yeah, sure. <laughs> don't, don't mind me. I'll just be over here hitting land drops. Doom Foretold is probably really bad against Elspeth Conquer's death decks, I would think. Yeah, possibly. We have yet to cast Dance, that is correct. It feels like People usually concede before you get to that point. So I'm probably just in for all the Tefries too. Well, they have this card to hand size. It's really good for us. Grixis can answer every card type now. What do you say to someone who's arguing that showing up, something showing up in a Pioneer League duck dump means it's 100% the best way to play that archetype? Well, there's a lot of ways you could talk about that not making sense, but probably the easiest one to bring up is the fact that, like, they publish a random variation of each archetype if it's been published, if multiple of those decks 5 0. So, like, if five Stompy decks 5 0, they pick one at random to publish. a friend that always views building the opponent as upside because you get the good cards out of their deck. The best way to approach that argument is you should point out the fact that most of the games of Magic they play, your their opponent does not see their entire deck. So only, only when a player is seeing the entirety of their deck game to game does that really come, come up. Hey, Bill Kinton, thanks for the half a year. The release, the release week high is Israel. Marathon run today, not... Maybe, I don't know. We did marathons over the weekend. I'm not sure how Christy would feel about another today. At the at the very least, I'm going till 5.30, which is another hour and a half from now. Discard spell, discard spell. I was just going to jam Doom Foretold here, but now I can try and clear the way. Yeah, always, always got to check with the boss, chat. Jake has Cub Scouts tonight, but I don't think I was going with his meeting anyways. It's a matter of, did I want, do I want to...
Yeah, I think Oath into Doom is right here because they might counter this to protect their Tefri. I really appreciate how they recreated the field of old Theros data by putting eight thought seasons in our deck. Ain't that the truth? So I probably need to start sacrificing these things so I can start trying to dance to kill them, right? You can dance if you wanna, you can leave your casbah. This is game one! This is game one! Who hurt you, opponent? What did they do? What was, what was their name? What? What was their name? I for, for the record, I think this card is great and I think more people should be playing it in the sideboard. I don't think this card is main deckable, but it's really good to have in your 75. And it it's good here for sure. It's like having a sideboard card game one. Yeah, I think this card's great. It's good against aggro and it's good against random stuff like what we're doing. Six, you hurt six, seven. You can dance, you can dance, do 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 do. Our opponent's stopping us from dancing. This means they're like the bad guy from Footloose, right? They just don't want to let us dance, chat. Why do you, why do you hate dancing? What did it ever do to you? Hold on folks, I'm gonna do it again. I don't think you have a good sized audience for that reference. Come on now, listen. If my experience has taught me anything, there's probably a good amount of overlap between uh, Magic the Gathering players and people who enjoy musical theater. And for the reference, that's not a slight on either of those groups. I too enjoy Magic the Gathering and musical theater. Hamilton is wonderful. Doom on you. Doom on you. Doom on you. Cut loose, do do, kick off your Sunday shoes, please, Louise, get me off of my knees, Jack, get back, do 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 do, do do do. All right, all right, we're. Do it seems like we're beating blue white control. All of my previous non-enjoyment of this deck has been replaced by the fact that we're currently beating blue light control <clears throat> we're blue white that's pre-boarded not quite like shatter this guy wouldn't be in our deck yeah blue blue white control meat box
Can cast that one. Let's check for a sweeper here. Cryptic Rocket. Thank you for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hoaglandia. We're having a wonderful day wherever you are. Deck is underwhelming, but it's worth it. I think I'm inclined to agree with that. Doing doing the thing is incredibly satis satisfying. Oh, yeah. Shatter that, baby. Shatter that. I really hope this works because we're out of dances. We can we can no longer dance. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. There's only 20 cards left in our deck. I think I'm ditching land blessing. Oh yeah, we can Othakaya. We can Othakaya kill with Defria Bunch. God bless America. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty of the icing. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Beep, 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 beep. They're dead next turn, right? So we're gonna give them the old draw step thought erasure. Stop, stop struggling, opponent. It'll be easier if you don't struggle. Shiggity shwooty, we are coming for you. Get out of here. So, Oath, Oath, Oath next turn. We've taken the Oath, chat. Kicking, kicking and screaming. We will drag you out back, Blue-White Control. Listen, if you're playing Blue-White Control, you deserve what comes your way, okay? That's all, that's all I'm saying. Bye, friend. Stroke, conquers death. Blessing, remorse. D Sparks not actually that good here. <clears throat> Shatter the sky is pretty bad. We actually don't have that many bad cards here, huh? Do I just cut the Othakayas? Is that my trim? Oath, Oath to cut, I think. Cut the draw three enchantment. Get out of here. Get out of here. Out. Out. Yeah, maybe we cut the egg instead of. Cut the egg instead of the uh, Othakaya's. How much time is left on the clocks? That's a good question. Thank you, Bob. That is a good observation and not something that I thought about. I'll refrain from doing that in the future. And that chat is a good example of how an actual adult responds to being informed something that they've said is not okay. They don't double down and try and justify it to save face. It's okay to say that you were wrong. All right, so what are we doing? I think it's just... Temple on one, bottom that. Clocks are actually not that big of a deal. They've got 23 minutes, I've got 24 minutes. It's actually, to pull up my political pulpit for half a second here, regardless of where you stand in the political spectrum, one of the most troubling things about Donald J. Trump is I don't think that man has ever said, I'm sorry, I was wrong about that in his life. It's, it's such an enormous red flag about who he is as a person. The in a inability 
inability to admit that, yeah, I messed up and I need to do better next time. I think that's very possible, Quaddle. The whole Sharpie Gate thing, whatever you want to call it with the weather map, was just like quite possibly the most absurd double down I've ever just like, maybe that's ever existed. Conqueror's Death could be a little annoying later. Definitely going to want to find a discard spell for there. That's for burn, bro. Thanks for the too much, Sleepy J. Welcome to Hoaglandia. Glad to hear you're feeling the burn. Hey, and thanks for the two months, Bloxley. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Maybe the most emperor's clothes in the last three years. Yeah, I agree. What's that? It's for all the for all the evangelical Christians out there that claim to support him. Ah, uh, you know, he who is not trustworthy in small things is also not trustworthy in large things. That's uh, that's uh, that's some kind of that's a Bible quote, right? We talked about that one before. I think I'm just playing the island and scrying too with the Thassa. Omen of the Seas here. I'm waiting for a discard spell to clear this out, ideally. There aren't any good aggro on the ladder recently. We've played a bunch of white devotion that's felt pretty good. And night night aggro with Ember Cleave is still running around, which is good. All right, dance is not bad for the future. I guess I just jam, jam Tef here and I'll bounce my egg to draw too effectively. Again, want to leave blue. Oh, I'm so dumb. Well, I wanted to leave black up, but apparently I forgot to float white. So the auto tapper tapped me off of black. So that was, that was a mistake. It didn't end up being a problem because I didn't draw a discard spell, but if I'd have drawn a discard spell, that would have been real awkward. If they really, we're just banishing lightning. Okay, so do I just conquer's death? They're banishing light then. Perfect. Gets a spot check for a counter spell here. That's a good draw. This is what we were looking for last turn. Yeah, I think Conqueror's Death is just their best card by a lot. Yep, in, in, snap it off. Get to Exile Banishing Light here, and then Tefri. Gosh, does Tefri just bounce? Tefri just bounces this, right? Just so like their next Banishing Light doesn't do anything. Because, like, this, uh, this uh, the other chapters on this don't do anything. How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? How, how many times? How many times must the lesson be taught? <laughs> mm, mm, I don't I don't know if this deck is very good, but it's very good in that matchup. Yeah, right, let's try it. Let's try one more. Let's try one more. All right, we're going to do one more with this deck. We'll take a short break, and we'll come back with some black-white Heliod. So, see what, see what our last one. Maybe we get another, another, another control player, please. Play a Temple of Enlightenment for me. Play, play a You know you want to. You 
know you want to. Our hand's pretty good in general. Discard spell, draw three sweeper. Okay. I'll take Esper Control too. Esper Control also acceptable. Ayo! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, we have no one to blame but ourselves, chat. Oh no! They stuck us in a corner together. Oh, that's. I mean, like, we're not even allowed to be mad, right? Like, I feel, I they say there's no such thing as right. Uh, yikes. We, we deserve this. It's a dance-off, bust a move. The person who plays more dances when yeah, the fact, the fact that their dances are in their opening hand is actually probably a downside here because that exposes them to our thought erasures. Whereas like we want to rip our dances off the top in the mid to late game. Are they about to draw step, take my thoughts away? They're not interesting. They're just like worried about this getting Othakaya. Weird, their build is strange. <clears throat> um, with this on top, I think I just egg and then land and then pass. So I, I was gonna Oath this but because we have a Doom Foretold, there's no reason to double oath this. Might be a bad idea. Huh? Okay. Now I'm going to pivot again. Man, you know what's sick too? Tefri picks the draw three back up. Oh, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. He just gets rid of it. All right, never mind. I'm wrong. Listen, chat. Cards have words, and words are hard. That's all I'd like to say. Cards have words, and words are hard. It's it's pretty bad. It's it's pretty bad. No, I am not making this up as I go. I'm not impressed by that line. Well, maybe you should be. Doom on me? No, doom on you, opponent. You do not get a draw. When your speller ability loses its only target, it's countered, so I didn't get to draw either. Draw step, thought erasure, your thought erasure. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a little sad I have to take tomorrow off. The numbers have been absurd. I have a contractor coming in the morning, though, and I have something with Jake to do in the afternoon. Maybe, maybe we should do standard again on Wednesday and push historic back. Maybe I'll flip that. Maybe we'll do Historic Friday and do more Standard Wednesday. Contractor streaming or stream for you. Am I supposed to leave Shatter in? I feel like there's a chance I'm supposed to leave. Nah, I probably just don't want Dance to resolve, huh? Let's cut Oath and Shatter and do this. Let's do, let's do this. Let's just rely on discard spells and strokes. Late night Jeff tomorrow? No. Because I, I want to be I want to be up on time for Wednesday morning. So. 
that's a good question. Like, our Tefries and our Dooms deal with their creatures, though, and, like, this deals with creatures. That's a great draw. <clears throat> that's great as well. Yeah, I agree, Myth. Actually, yeah, I think I'm probably going to rearrange Historic and Standard because the Historic numbers on Saturday were not great. Would probably prioritize my arena time for Standard. Hey, Savage, thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Is sub count or viewer count more important to you? Definitely sub count. Viewer count. Viewer counts pay a small amount of ad money, but the bulk bulk of my income is subscriber money. When I when I when I say thanks for paying my bills when people sub, that's not just a little quip. That's just the honest truth. Hey, Midian, thanks for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. However, viewer count not only makes you feel good, but higher viewer counts tend to bring in more new subs too. Like the number of new Prime subs I've had over the course of the, the last four days has been, been very high. New, new set releases bring new people into Magic that might not otherwise be there. So now the question is, do I think I can win the Doom off here? I think I have the tools to win this. It might be close though. That's more like it. You're the only person who is pronounced by Twitch name the way I intended instant validation on the correct stuff. Oh gosh. Now I don't remember how I pronounced it. <laughs> Oh, they have another Tef. Well, I could I could Omen at instant speed if they bounce my egg. So like, Omen's extra good, right? If I draw a land here, I can Conqueror's Death, get rid of their Tefri, which would be nice. Oh, Tefri says I can't. Yeah, good call. Good call. Right? Hearthstone, all that jazz. Oh, Hearthstone. Tis a silly place. Yeah. Three mana. Three mana Tefri removes a lot of the strategical value for magic. So, I mean, like, they can bounce my Conqueror's Death here, but, like, then I get to Conqueror's Death something else later. So, like, I lose the Doom Foretold, but, like, the cost for losing it here is, like, pretty minimal, right? I think I'm going to Omen plus Doom here. Unless we draw something good with Omen, we'll start with that. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in for eggs. Actually, I might be in for the land too, honestly, at this point. Yeah, I think I'm just thing, thing here. Thing, thing, doom, go. If they have a third Tefri, our doom gets punished a little bit. <clears throat> If they don't have third Tefri though, I sack my Omen and then I go Egg plus Conqueror's Death next turn and can maybe push them out. Elspeth Conquers Tef. I feel like that's something, that would be Wizards Approved storyline, right? Elspeth Conquering Tefri.
It better be a Netflix special. <laughs> Man, speaking of magic and Netflix, I really hope, I really hope that the magic Netflix animated series is good because like my five-year-old's been super into looking at magic artwork when like he comes in and sees me working he's like asked to like look at it with me so like i really hope it doesn't suck so i can be like hey you know those cards you like here's a tv show that would be that would be nice yeah it, it is russo brother so here's hoping Yeah, yeah, second line here could be super relevant. Instant speed dance was kind of gross. Land, land, <clears throat> if we draw a land, we can dance back a whole bunch of things. Huh? Do I just dance for five here? Is it wrong to dance for five? If it's wrong, then I don't want to be right. Because, like, I get to exile their doom foretold, right? So, like, your doom goes away, I draw two cards. And then, like, this is going to come up and let me... This is going to come up and let me make all their spells more expensive again for a turn. Hey, thanks, Eric. I hope you had a good stream. Hope you had a good run with Esper Hero we battled earlier today. Have a sword for any time you're lurking around here so you can chat. This this mirror is very silly. This this card is very, very good. Like, to Wizard's credit, they printed a bunch of really relevant white cards in this set. Like, as fun as it's been to rag on white being the, you know, the the least favorite, whatever you want to call it for a while, like. It's really good. The stain, yep, yeah, the under underpowered forgotten color. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hit me, dealer. Hit me, dealer. Sorry, I'm late. I've got time. <clears throat> what would you give white as its core to be more relevant? Um, I don't know. Something that I think could be worth... Actually, I guess I do know. Something that I think could be worth exploring is I think Knight of the White Orchid could be considered a core white mechanic. I don't care about this, right? <clears throat> I just let this happen. Those are perfect on top, too. Well, obviously, obviously we're a master of the dance mirror. Easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right. So like, I never understood why, why people liked playing this deck because every time we've played it, it's always been kind of bad. But those last two matches that we played, like when this deck works, it is like, soul crushingly good 
for for what you're playing. This is this is one of those decks that's a very it's very emotionally satisfying to play. When you lose, you lose quickly, and when you win, it's this really long drawn out pulling them across the rack, making a miserable gameplay. It's it's real real sweet. We could call us the Lord of the Dance. I agree. I don't know if I have any strong opinions on this. I think the obvious inclusions were were good. Um, Elspeth Conquers Death is great. Maybe you even want this in the main deck just because, like, it's real silly with Tefri as well. I'm not sure what hand what you'd want to cut offhand. Yeah, if you really want to hedge aggro, you could try some birth, I guess. I had some disfigures, but birth is probably good too, so... All right, what are we doing? We're gonna hit a quick ad roll while I get set up for the next deck. When we get back, we are gonna try some black-white Heliod here, which is Heliod featuring cat oven combo because Daxos also triggers when a creature dies, which could get very silly very quickly. So back in just about three minutes, folks. Thanks for getting out today. Don't go anywhere.